the director came in and he had an idea which was to create this kind of machine made out of instruments but being also quite abstract and ambiguous. The idea was to be in a really moody dark pint where everything is moving and breathing somehow. The basic first design we start with was with creating some elements uh, based on instruments like different ones and also combine them together so it wasn't a precise instrument in itself, it was more a hybrid. We designed a lot of pipes and instruments and then we put them together in a wall and uh, making sort of like repetitions and things that later on could be animated. While all this was going on, the, the building and the designing of this music machine, I think this started about a week before the shoot. And it was a whole green screen shoot, it was three stuntmen and one big massive uh, drum. And those stuntmen were fired against the drums with like air ramps and jumping from jump trampolines again against the drums. So these were basically the only real elements which were shot for the whole commercial. Initially we got Roz to to model the, the main character. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Quan had taken a lot of high-res stills from the shoot. So then we were able to apply these pictures and texture the, the character um, and create a thing called normal maps, which yeah, essentially bakes the high-res geometry and creates all those details and puts it onto the low-res geometry. I did the, the correct animation basically in Endorphin um, and I have to say it was, it was quite fun in a way because it's Endorphin is a kind of a program which simulates behaviors, human behaviors, body behaviors. In the beginning it was a bit of testing and see what, what happens. So I just took a character and shot it against the drum. But then it was of course a um, structured way because I had to match also a bit of the movements the real actors did. So I set key poses and in, in between those poses Endorphin did all the kind of simulation. From there we get this animation data basically back to XSI and then did the rendering, which was sometimes tweaked a little bit, but basically it was, I would say, 70% of the animation is pure endorphin animation and just tweaks on top of it. You know, 23 layers was one of the shots, um, and then some other ones were like 14 layers, you know, averaging at least three or five per shots. In the end we try and streamline it so we had about, in most cases with the backgrounds, anywhere between seven and eight passes to build up the background. Um, and in some shots of course it was a lot more than that. Uh, that once we sort of got that streamlined we were able to uh, sort of get through the yeah. positive shots reasonably quickly. I mean once we sort of developed the look uh, and the director Steve sort of approved it and the agency approved it and we all sort of had our own little bit of input and got that look developed and it was just a matter of just getting through all the shots. Uh, the majority of the CG shots were comped in shake uh, and then sort of the shots that had a lot of live action was done in flame because those shots required the live actors, live actors to fall that would then transition to 3D particles. So you had about six or seven, yeah, six uh, or seven passes. particle passes, um, yeah, like spec yeah. highlights, occlusion, beauty, mats, vectors, motion vectors passed to blur it mm. uh, depending on a shot by shot basis. Uh, so that was done in flame just because of time constraints. Uh, by the time flame got on board, the majority of the mats were done, all the green screen was done. We'd bring them into the edit, balance them out with mats, uh, and get that all happening per shot. Um, so it was sort of a good, good teamwork and actually quite a good 2D pipeline as such.
Dance. It's alive inside. <laughs>